Hunters, I don't want you to ever complain again. Literally, the first build of Witch Queen is gonna be a build just for you. And I gotta say, this build is one of the nastiest builds I have ever used. And it starts with this bow right here called Under Your Skin. Guys, this is a bow that you can pick up from the PsyOps Battlegrounds playlist. Upon completing the quest and unlocking it there in the helm, and again, you wanna choose the PsyOps Battleground playlist that is in the helm. Upon doing that activity over and over, you get the chance of getting one of these seasonal weapons to drop. Now, under your skin is a combat bow that requires three different weapon patterns to fully unlock it. So it is kind of a grind. However, there are various ways starting this week that will allow you to get this weapon even faster. One of them is to unlock this rank right here. And again, by completing the seasonal challenge and getting one of these insights, you can then put it into this rank up right here, which will allow you to actually take your Umbro Ingrams and buy these weapons directly for a cost that is. And it does require like Risen Umbral Energy and Umbral as well. So it is kind of expensive, but red box weapons, meaning the weapons you actually have to attune to get these patterns will drop from this. And again, just doing the activity in general also has the chance to drop these seasonal weapons. Now, with that being said, let's talk about this bow. Guys, we've already shown us making this bow. We did a video going over the fastest way to level in the game. And by the way, check out that video if you like. But upon leveling things up and getting this weapon to at least level 16, you can unlock all the enhanced traits. Now, there is a number of enhanced traits on this weapon that I was very interested in. But the first one I wanted to start with was this combination right here. Enhance Archer's Tempo and Enhance Successful Warm-Up. Now, the reason why this is so important is that they both do almost the exact same thing. Archer's Tempo substantially decreases after every precision hit for a longer duration, even more so than regular Archer's Tempo. It's pretty nice. And Successful Warm-Up, the enhanced version, simply requires a final blow with the weapon and this also decreases that draw time for what it says here an improved duration which by the way is an understatement it is a long duration now the question that we wanted to ask how fast is this bow answer so fast literally the fastest bow in the game faster than that of hush and yes we did a side-by-side -side frame count of all of this yesterday and it turns out that the weapon starts with about a 34 to 35 frame count with successful warm-up this actually drops our frame count down to 22 and with archer tempo, we were pleasantly surprised to see that this also stacks, giving us a draw speed and frame count of 11. Put that in perspective, guys. Gambit with Archer's Gambit literally being procced, which was considered one of the fastest bows in the game and still the fastest bow in the game, still requires 13 frames for a draw. Plus, it has to be shot from the hip. That's the beautiful thing about this bow right here, is that you can use it like a regular bow. You could be aiming down sights, and every single precision shot, your bow is getting stronger and faster. Now, the bow string that we use was elastic string which does drop our accuracy a little bit but this is a precision frame bow so by default they actually have a pretty decent amount of accuracy we also have compact arrow shaft where your weapon has increased handling speed as well as reload speed and i actually ended up slotting on a reload masterwork or at least buffing that reload stat in its precision frame now the reason why i did that was because most of the time my gauntlets have other mods right i'm rocking anti-barrier bow or some other champion related mod and so what this actually results in is that I normally don't have the ability to slot on something like Bow Reloader. Or if I do, I can only slot on one. So the beautiful thing is, adding on that plus 10 in reload speed and its intrinsic perk allows this weapon to notch an arrow back up even faster. Again, it's not all about the draw time, although that is important. It's also about that reload. Now, the origin trait that is found on this bow is really what makes this bow turn your guardian into a walking tank. And that is his origin trait called Land Tank. Essentially, guys, final blows of this weapon grant increased resilience and additional damage resistance from combats and this actually results in you maxing out your resilience yes even if you're not 10 resilience or high resilience voila getting a kill with this weapon will result in your resilience maxing out what's even better is that the damage resistance that you gain from each kill at one kill it's five percent two kills it's ten percent and at three kills where it stacks out is at a whopping 15 percent damage resist guys these are the kind of things that will keep you alive especially in in-game content I have never felt more tanky than what I feel now when using this bow. Now, considering that this bow is a void bow, we obviously want to lean into Volatile Flow. You've probably been seeing this mod bouncing around, guys. This is an artifact mod that only costs two, and essentially it allows for your weapon to shoot volatile rounds after picking up a void elemental well. Now, I actually ended up leaning in on this pretty heavily, as this is probably going to be a build I bring into the raid. But one of the best ways to produce elemental wells, especially on a hunter, considering you're using your class ability a bunch, is of course 
Force Reaping Wellmaker. Activating your class ability, your next weapon final blow on a combatant will spawn a Void Elemental Well. Beautiful thing about this is that any final blow, right? And we're also double stacking this with Perpetuation. And the exotic that I'm using here with it is the Six Coyote. Now I'm using Six Coyote to get that dodge. That way I'm constantly dodging for a number of benefits. Number one, each and every time I am dodging, I'm going invisible. I'm literally vanishing. And that's with the Vanishing Step Void Aspect. This dodge right here into invisibility will keep you alive even under the most dire situations. I'm also pairing this with Stylus Executioner, primarily because I want to slot on multiple fragments. And my fragments are Echo of Undermining, Echo of Domineering, Echo of Persistence, as well as Echo of Reprisal. And of course, the Mobius Quiver Super itself. Now, each and every time I dodge, I'm vanishing. And then when I come out, I'm immediately killing something to grant myself an Elemental Well. And a couple of benefits occur every time I pick that up. Number one, my Void Weapon here is being granted these Volatile Rounds. Number two, I'm taking advantage of perks like Well of Utility. We're picking up these Void Elemental Wells. will grant you additional class ability energy. This will allow me to constantly keep dodging. We're also combining this with Font of Might as well as Psionic Forging 2. Now, you really want to choose this mod, guys. And if you got the Avarice Armor, this is so good. But essentially, this increases the duration of the Land Tank Origin trait, as well as the Hockey Breach Armament trait. But this is so good with this bow. And you combine that with Font of Might as well for that increase in 25% more damage. And considering we're dodging so much, we might as well take advantage of Dynamo. Dynamo is getting us our super back faster every time we dodge. And we're also taking advantage of Void Siphon, which I know might seem like a waste to some. But considering we're getting so many Void related kills, producing these orbs to pick up, even though we're not necessarily taking advantage of Charge of Light, I'm still taking advantage of mods like Absolution, as well as Orbs of Restoration, which again, all feeds back into my ability energy. And considering we're using grenades to debuff our enemies, this is the cycle, guys. Go invisible, get a bow shot off, get elemental wells, proc volatile, and continue exploding everything in front of you with those volatile rounds. And again, the beautiful thing about Style as Executioner is every time you defeat a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target, target, you're granted invisibility in true sight. This is feeding into the bow. Everything here is a giant loop. And by the way, if you're interested in this build down below in both the description and the pinned comments will be a link to this exact build. Now, if you're wondering what things synergize well, if you wanted to fully commit to this build, guys, Deathbringer, we did a damage test side by side this evening and Deathbringer is showcasing the best damage numbers in the game right now. It is extremely deadly. Yes, there's a learning curve to it, but in terms of pure damage with volatile flow, it synergizes and it does it well. You can rock that with under your skin. But even if you're not, in the nightfall today, I was rocking Parasite. And what's so good about Parasite is as I'm getting kills with other weapons, Parasite is growing stronger. And we've already established that that times 20 of Worm's Hunger increases our damage substantially. One Parasite shot at about times 20 is the equivalent of almost three Gallarhorn shots, just to give you some perspective of how strong Parasite is. Normally not a good weapon if you're just continually doing DPS with no build up to it. It. But in terms of taking out champions and other things, it's fantastic. And what's so beautiful about this bow is I'm constantly getting kills with it, which is constantly feeding into Parasite. Regardless, Under Your Skin is a fantastic bow. Arguably the best bow in the game. The question is, would I have chosen another role? Is there something better than what you see right here? Because there was a lot of people yesterday torn about what we should go with. Personally, guys, I like the speed more. That is where I fall in love with this weapon because I love just expending tons and tons of arrows back to back. Whether I'm getting precision kills or just regular kills successful warm-up archers tempo both of these being enhanced is definitely worth the cost i will say this though enhance archers tempo if you only have one ascendant alloy i would get that first and just use the base version of successful warm-up until you have the materials to purchase the enhanced version of successful warm-up but as far as other roles that look really really good you do have enhanced explosive head which we did for a second there consider you also have enhanced dragonfly which also feeds into your stats a little more if if you wanted to take almost a gambit hush approach, you could rock something like hip fire and successful warm up or even hip fire opening shot together. But again, despite those roles and everything being good here and being enhanced, personally, Archer's Tempo successful warm up has been amazing. I am not a big bow user, guys. I use a bow only when a season calls for it. But this bow right here, you're going to fall in love with this role and it's going to be hard for you to use other weapons. So, guys, get it for yourselves. Again, this week should be easier to grind for this weapon as well as the other season related weapons get those upgrades pay attention to the narrative because overall the seasonal narrative is actually really good as for me guys i'm gonna be bringing this bow into the day one raid without a doubt fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right